But uh, people wonder how a Southern Baptist gets filled with the Holy Ghost and writes books on spiritual warfare. Well, my father had no choice. He walked into hell here in Chattanooga. Uh, And uh, that led to a great awakening in my father's spirit. And he was filled with the Spirit in 1989. And it changed the church. We entered into a revival that really went on uh, probably for 15 years. It was a powerful revival, um, and I, I grew up in that. But uh, let me say this. I saw some of the most hateful things uh, during my childhood at church, and it really turned me away uh, from church because I saw how my parents were treated on four occasions. Uh, they staged walkouts and tried to get rid of my dad as pastor because he was trying to clean up this mess, and God had called him here. And uh, I, I saw how hard uh, this life was on my father, but I fit, but I love my dad and uh, still do. He's my hero. Like I'm sure your dad was your hero. Um, but um, I, um, I had a call on my life at eight years old, and uh, I drifted away from that call. I let bitterness win in my teens. I got into drugs, um, alcohol, a number of things, and. Uh, I, I ran off and got married, um, and at the end of most of that, I've been married 20 years. I have three children. One's in college uh, near Cincinnati, and I have one in uh, middle school and one in high school. Uh, I married a beautiful woman. I got her young before she knew any better, Kelly. <laughs> we've been there uh, 20 years, but uh, I got married to her and uh, was not going to do ministry. I had a career. I worked at a Fortune 500 insurance company. She worked at a, another insurance company. I was going to raise my kids, um, uh, party on the weekends, coach little league sports, and wasn't going to pursue the things of God. And uh, at age 23, my life was, was pretty good. We had a nice home. I had a career. But I, I was dying inside. I was depressed, and I wanted to die. And I was driving by Abba's house, church I now pastor. Yes. In June of 05, I was on my way to a bar with some friends. That was a weekly activity. We'd find a ball game or something to watch uh, to give us an excuse to party, if you know what I mean. Sure. And uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, there lies your destiny. As I drove past wow. Abba's house. Were oh. I tried to drink that voice away. It didn't add up to me because I didn't think God could speak to you if you weren't reading the Bible because I was raised Baptist. Um, But the Holy Spirit got all over me that night. And at midnight of June of 2005, God saved me. He restored me. He reconciled my soul. I forgave those religious people that hurt my family. My father and I restored our relationship and uh at that moment i said lord i don't know what you want to do with me but i'm i'm willing and i lay my life at your feet because uh my father's experience um uh, with with uh restoration he got me up to preach pretty quick uh <laughs> he i preached in october i got right with god in june i kept my job and so forth and I think looking back, my dad had the knowledge to say, if I don't get him doing what he's called to do quick, he's going to go back. I think my dad was scared I would go back to that life. And uh, I preached my first message in uh, October of 2005 on John chapter 5. It was on a Sunday night. Typically, uh, we, we would have a few hundred people on Sunday night. Well, that night, the building was full, even in the balcony. And... Uh, the power of God hit the place like what you were talking about. And people I had bought drugs from and partied with were saved. And uh, God moved in a miraculous way. And that uh, started a journey in my life, Philip. Uh, I kept my job, but I started preaching in rehab, jails, street, anywhere that, that would have me, uh, teaching Sunday school. God touched my wife, and uh, we just started pursuing the things of God. And uh, um, after a few years, uh, the church decided that I would be their outreach pastor because I was leading a lot of people to Jesus and baptizing a lot of people. 
uh, again, it was a, a volunteer thing and then a part-time thing, a bivocational thing. And uh, later, God <laughs> Slippery slope. Up, yeah, absolutely. God <laughs> opened up a door uh, for me to pastor a, a church in the inner city of Atlanta that had a great homeless ministry to the hurting of those addicted to drugs. And I wow. served there on the weekends for a little over a year while preaching on Wednesday here. And um, almost uh, moved to Atlanta. And uh, my father called and said, uh, after about five or six years in that journey and, and getting my education, and my father said, I want you to come back and be my senior associate pastor. And I said, let me pray about it. And uh, I prayed about it. And I came back home. And within a, two months, my father nearly died um, of uh of heart blockages. He had the quadruple bypass. The hospital sent him home four uh, times in a week. And I was concerned. I, I felt like I had a word from the Holy Spirit that there was something wrong. My sisters were involved in that process as well. And he won't listen to me. So I had to get his best friend, who's one of our faithful members, to talk to him about his health. And yeah. his best friend, uh, said, Ron, I don't want you to get on the airplane tomorrow to go to Louisiana and preach. Let's go get a stress test just to make sure he'd been sent home. And he went for that stress test and never came home. They wheeled him into emergency surgery. Oh my. And uh, so at 29, um, 10 years ago, uh, I pastored the church six months. We took his cell phone. We took, we wanted him to heal and recover. Yes. And I pastored it. I didn't really know what I was doing. I thought I did at the time, and I thought I could do it, and I had all the vigor and, and the confidence. And the Holy Spirit really fell and blessed our church, but I also realized at that time I wasn't ready. My, my confidence, or some might would say arrogance at 29, I, I felt like I was, but I realized in that six months I wasn't. So I got uh, into my studies more. I started just learning from mentors like my father, Pastor Jensen Franklin, Bishop Dale Bronner, Bobby Hawkins, uh, many, many, many pastors uh, out there. And uh, anyways, God blessed in that season in spite of me. Uh, and it was a surprise uh, to many of our saints. But at that time, our council voted that I would one day succeed my father. And yes. later we put a five-year timetable to that. And uh, my first day as the lead pastor was in 2018. I'm in my fourth year now. And to, sorry for that long introduction. To answer your question, what uh, was it like getting the keys to the Chevy? Um, I felt like I had no choice. I felt called. I feel like I was born to do what I'm doing right now. I hear you. I, I hear you. I'm so grateful to God for the opportunity to do it. And uh, my father, everything went well till that last year, Philip, and then his anxiety started acting up. Oh, my. Uh, because pastoring 50 years, and I, I, went, I remember going to him, and I said, Dad, I said, you're acting uncomfortable with this now all of a sudden. And I said, if you want to pastor this church when you're 80, I'll hold your arms up. He said, I want you to go home and get your prayer closet and pray about this thing. Whatever you decide, we'll we'll reverse course if we need to. And he came back. He called me two weeks later. He said, "Son, come in, Mom." He started crying. He said, "I haven't had a vision for this church in five years." Uh. He said, "I love." It. He said, "I love to preach. I love to help pastors, but I don't have a vision for this body. You yeah. do. You know, how can I help?" And uh, I said, "Well, <laughs> we got to get rid of some people. We got to fix some stuff." And uh, so that started a process. But uh, unlike some, I knew exactly what I was getting into uh, in 2018. I, uh, I, I, I never had the identity crisis issues that some people I, I love dearly have had in their past. Because when God saved me at 23, I was released from trying to be like my dad. Sure. I, I knew God had called me at that moment. And I knew I had to follow God and be obedient to him. And yes. uh, my dad has never pressured me to be like him. To, he, he's always said, be yourself. Let the spirit lead you. And 
And so we had a lot that we faced early on uh, for the church to really take on my DNA and what God's called us to do. But in the midst of even a pandemic, Philip, we've had an incredible year. We've seen souls saved. Amazing. I'm happy about missions just like you are. We've got a children's center in uh, San Fuego where we feed 100 kids a day. And we have ministry in the prisons and to the homeless and to the, to the addicts. And uh, that's really my heart is to be the hands and feet of Christ and help those mm-hmm. in the struggle. And so um, it, it's, it's a mandate. You know, having the keys, it's its a lot of pressure at times if you don't give that pressure to the Holy Spirit. But I also feel grateful that God could use me. Uh, and he'll use anybody. And I'm just thankful that I, I got to a place in my life where I, I pushed back the enemy and quit listening to his lies and said, you know, God does have a purpose for me. God wants to use me. And I, I bet you have people watching that, you know, they, they may not feel like they could measure up, but God. God wants to use that person that's watching you feel that way. God that, never used anyone 